Okay, we've had Mexico, Australia and Canada. Now we're moving to Ecuador. And I'd like to ask Marshall Covell, President and CEO of Lumina Gold, to the stage, please. Hi, everyone. So uh, Lumina Gold, we operate in Ecuador. It's Ross Beatty's development company. Um, we started in Ecuador in 2014. Do a little bit of forward-looking statements here. Um, at this stage, we're in a feasibility study. We're about six months into the feasibility study. We hope to have most of the drilling work and 18,000 meter drilling program completed in December. We're fairly well advanced. But let me give you some of the project highlights of, the, of the, what we've done to date. We completed a PFS in early 2023. In that PFS, we had a probable reserve of 11.6 million ounces of gold and 1.4 billion pounds of copper. We also had quite a bit of inferred material, 3.7 million ounces of gold and 0.5 billion pounds of copper. So roughly combined resource of about 20 million ounces of gold and 2.6 billion pounds of copper. Now, when we took the project over in 2014, there was no um, re resource on the project. Subsequent drilling, you know, we made the discovery and taken it up to this point. So we're pretty proud of that. The production profile in the 23 um, PFS was 371,000 ounces of year average and 41 million pounds of cop copper. If you look at it on a uh, gold equivalent basis, that's about 469,000 ounces of gold equivalent a year. And there's quite a few years that it pops over 500,000 ounces of gold equivalent production. So it makes it a tier one production profile. Long life, 26 years, mine life, and a low cost, $671 an ounce ASIC net of byproduct copper. And we did the uh, PE, PFS on 1,650 gold and 375 copper. That gave us a 2.2 billion NPV. And then if you look forward to more or less today's gold prices, it's sort of a 3.5 million MPV at 1,980 gold. A lot of leverage to the upside of the gold price. And we think that we've modeled the project in, in the PFS um, fairly conservatively. And then earlier this year, we announced in May a $300 million streaming deal with Wheaton Precious Metals. That gives them 6.6% of the payable gold. I'll get into more detail of that as we move forward. Uh, as I said, Ross uh, is the, the founder and he's the primary shareholder of the group. He's got 27.7% of the company. Management and the board have an additional 8.2%. We have good support in Ecuador with the Ecuador Entrepreneur Group having 16.5% and a diversified private equity fund out of, um, or investment fund out of San Francisco has 6.1%. Um, Share structure, basically 415 million shares of uh, issued and outstanding. We've got some warrants and options that take it up to 450 million roughly. Market cap at 40 cents a share, 166 million Canadian. Um, we have cash on hand. Uh, we just uh, received another tranche of a payment from Wheaton. Research coverage, Red Cloud, Haywood, Raymond James. Um, Ecuador has come a long way since we entered the country in 2014. Fruit and Mirador were built and put into production. The next round of projects uh, to be built are Curipamba, La Plata, Loma Larga. We have another company in uh, Ecuador, uh, Luminex Resources. We just announced a merger this week with uh, Adventus, who have Curipamba, to create a larger um, production and development company. And then also the Coscabel project is out there. And also, since we've uh, entered the country, it's steadily improved through multiple administrations, its fiscal regime and regulatory regime. And today, Ecuador uh, mining in Ecuador passed bananas for exports to become the number three uh, export uh, revenue, revenue producer. It passed, so you've got petroleum, you've got um, shrimp farming, mining, and then bananas. Fraser Institute shows steady improvement in the investment climate in Ecuador. So if we look at um, Congreo specifically, we've got power, we're close to the port facility. Mirador brings their concentrates about 350 kilometers across the country to Porto Bolivar. We're 40 kilometers from that port. 
will produce the gold copper concentrate. There's good paved roads, there's water. We're low elevation relatively in the Andean setting, 1,350 meters, the highest point, and no communities on the project directly. Closest community is about seven kilometers away, very good social license, no indigenous uh, communities in the area, and we're in El Oro province, the gold province, which has had a history of mining. Um, we get a lot of questions about the project. You know, does it have scale? It's the 26th largest primary gold asset in any stage, production, development, exploration. It's 13th largest undeveloped primary gold deposit um, out there. What about the grade? You know, this is more akin to a porphyry copper, fairly homogeneous grade across the deposit. And if you look at it from a copper equivalent basis, it's similar to Cobre de Panama, Mount Milligan, Red Chris. One of the advantages of the project is a very low stripping ratio, 1.26 tons of waste per ton of ore. Also, we have cheap power in Ecuador, seven cents a kilowatt hour, access to good infrastructure, and the project will be scoped 30,000 tons per day, expanding to 60 and then 80, so we have economies of scale. The majority of the production life will be at 80,000 tons per day. Initial capital, about 925 million, uh, plus uh, VAT, which is refundable, that's 12%. So Fruta and Mirador are projects sort of that bracket, Congrejos, they've been built, they've been financed internationally, so we believe that's positive. And the PFS that we just completed, we're in the negotiations now for a investment protection agreement. So that'll, that's a key component of getting an operating license. Just looking at uh, Congrejos, there's two pits on the bottom right. This is the Congrejos pit in the PFS. That's year one through seven. Then Gran Bestia comes in. Congrejos gets finished in year 17. So that's kind of the basic mining. Now, you'll see this bottom um, pit here. Uh, that's a resource pit. The red jagged pit outline there is the mine plan pit. We constrained that to $1,100 gold, and then within it we used a $15 NSR cutoff grade. One of the things that you can really see here, Gran Bestia on the left has even lower stripping ratio than the average of 1.26, but Congreos comes right to the surface. So from a mining perspective, very good. Mentioned earlier, we finished, uh, we're in the process of finishing 18,000 meter drilling program, metallurgy resource upgrade, and pit slope. Um, there's a lot of numbers here, but basically we're mining 659 uh, million tons of material. The average grade through the life of mine is 0.71 gold equivalent. Metallurgy is really good, 85% recovery on gold, 79% on copper. Most of the material is a gold copper concentrate that I mentioned, no arsenic, no penalty metals, um, and we produce about 7% of that recovered material in a Doré. So on the bottom left here, you've got the 925 million for the 30,000 tons per day. Year four, we expand with another 342 million to um, 60,000 tons per day. It's a parallel line, and then we upgrade the, both of those lines in year seven for another 111 million. And then sustaining um, capital net of uh, closures about 662. So basically, if we look at um, the IRR at 17% at uh, 1,650 gold, 375 copper, if you move that forward to today's prices, sort of 1980, although copper isn't at 450, but you're roughly 23% IRR. And I mentioned earlier, at today's prices, the uh, MPV goes up to 3.5 billion. So what does the Wheaton stream mean to us? So basically, Wheaton gets 6.6% of the gold payable up to 700,000 ounces, then it goes down to 4.4. They pay us roughly 20% of spot for that. And if there is a takeover, that gold stream can be bought down one third to 4.4. What do we get? We get 48 million, um, and that helps us for pre-production, the, the feasibility study, some early works, land acquisition, that sort of thing. And then it gives us 252 million uh, for construction, and that's of the 925 ne million needed. And what does it do? So it drops the 2.2 billion MPV down to 2 million, but it increases the IRR from 17 up to um, 
to 19. And then if you look at sort of today's prices, um, it, it reduce, reduces the MPV from 3.5 down to 3.3, and then 26% uh, IRR. This is just a general layout. You got the two adjacent open pits, waste rock storage to the south, process plant to the northwest, um, and then further off to the west of that, we have a dry stack tailings facility. That gives us the advantage to recycle about 85% of the water and put that back through the plant, a, a more, much more stable um, scenario for tailings, no tailings dam, and uh, less impact uh, to a conventional tailings dam that could fail. So we're real happy with this approach. It's becoming a lot more cost-effective dry stack tailings. Talk about ESG, it's a real important aspect of the of the uh, work that we do with the communities and environment. Everybody does, does this work, but I wanna focus on what's next, what we need to do to get this project uh, in operation. So we've got an ex exploration investment protection agreement that's being amended, and that'll give us the terms for construction of the, um, the project. What you get once you have a term sheet from that, and we're in negotiations for the exploitation one now, you get a tax rate of 20%. You get no duties on major plant and equipment. You get uh, repatriation of capital at 5%. And um, I think I got most of it. Oh, and the tax rate's fixed at 20%. And then ultimately, once you get that done, the feasibility and your permits, you get the final sign-off on the exploitation investment agreement and you negotiate the royalty. And the royalty range has been between 3 and 8% um, in Ecuador. So all in all, we're doing these three things in parallel. We're putting an ESIA consultant on board here early next year to start that process. So that'll take about two years to complete. And then it's about a 2.5, two and a half year build for the project. So I'm on the board of Equinox Gold, and we're building Greenstone right now. It's a 1.25 uh, billion build. We're 96% complete. But what I want to show you here is where Congreo stacks up. These are all the projects that produce over 250,000 ounces of gold a year. Solaris Norte is being built. Cote is almost commissioned. We're building Greenstone. Blackwater just Artemis started building that. So we're in the sweet spot of projects that are actually being built today. We get hit a lot by the grade. If you look on the right, the grade of Congreos is 0.71 gold equivalent life of mine. If you look at the milling piers uh, here, we're at the bottom. But if you take the, the gold equivalent grade and divide it by the stripping ratio, we move up to the top. So this has a real implication on operating cost from mining. It, it puts us in a good position. You're moving very little waste to get at a ton of ore. Now here's where I think there's a big investment opportunity and a big value disconnect. You know, we came in in 2014, no resource. 2017, we had a four million ounce resource. We've grown that over 400% to the current resource of roughly 20, 20 million ounces. Yet gold has um, gone up 67%. Copper has gone up 32% and our all-in share per, or market cap, including the financings, we've gone down 20%. Now, obviously, the whole sector is being hit right now, but um, to me, that's, that's a good point to look at as serious to get in. So in closing here, since we took over the project in 2014, we've consolidated the concession package that encompasses both pits. When we started, we only had 50% of the deposit. We've taken the project from no resource to the 26th largest gold resource in the world, completed three economic st studies, and substantially de-risked the project. We released the 2023 PEA and demonstrates massive value proposition. We adjusted the, pro uh, <coughs> excuse me, the project uh, phasing to offset inflationary costs. So in the, the PEA that we did earlier, it was 40,000 tons per day to 80. We went down to 30 to 60 and then on to 80. And that helped us keep our um, initial capital fairly flat. And we caught the uh, inflation pretty good. Our estimate is Q, uh, Q4 2022. 
So we think we're in a good place with the, the capital estimate we had. We also uh, converted 11.6 million ounces of gold and 1.4 billion pounds of copper to a probable mineral reserve, 26 uh, year mine life at 2.2 billion MPV. And our team has been together a long time. I've been with Ross since 2004. We've had a successful uh, career of uh, monetizing large scale assets. We sold eight companies for a cumulative of 1.6 billion over that time period. And that's it, right on time. Marshall. <laughs> <laughs>